Deep Motion uses video and AI to create tracking for your characters and face and a few other things. We'll explore using Deep Motion so you could do a lot more. After you download the motion clips and then unzip it, make sure you could be working with the T pose. This is this will make it very simple to translate and align this mocap data to the 3D application. To so start with the T pose. Import your clip into the 3D application to start aligning it with that application's native way of dealing with animations. We can relate this to the human IK in this application, or we can just start with the keyframes. Look how dense they are. I'm selecting the rootmost part of the character right here. I'm going to x-ray the joints to make it a little easier to see. And do that in this application by going under shading, x-ray joints. If I select any of these joints, here are all the keys. And you can see it's very dense. Let me reduce this. And you can skip over this step for now. Just showing in case you want to reduce it before connecting. Go in your window, animation editor, graph editor. I'm going to shift click this plus. The graph editor shows the data. You can see the shakiness in some of this data right here. And we can look into smoothing that out later. Right now, I'm going to click, I'm going to take five. Shift click this plus of the keys for all the body parts like that. Drag a marquee selection in the graph editor around that whole graph. Go under key. Key reducer filter. You can open up the flyout box. This property box will give you more information. I'm going to change the precision to 50% and click on apply. Now when you click on the various body parts, you can see that some reduction has happened. You could continue playing with this precision to reduce it more. To get this character to control our own characters, let's open up the human IK. You can find human IK, if it's not docked off on this side, going under window, animation editor, human IK. Click on this button right here, create character definition. And this will relate this character to the human IK. Once it's related to the human IK, we can then project this human IK onto other characters to control them and bake these keys to those characters to make them independent. And once they're independent from this skeleton, we can delete this character and then work with the clips like we do normally with any other animation of a character. I'm gonna start with the hip right here. Select the hip, right click, assign selected bone. It's as simple as that. And you would do that for all this hierarchy. Right click, assign selected bone. Now here's a skeleton bone that's not appearing here. Click this triangle, selecting that skeleton bone and assign it to the lowest part on that chain. Assign selected bone. When you're done, like there's more bones here than there are here. Just click the triangle to go back. Let me do the upper arm. And then you can move down to the lower arm, the hand. Once you finish one side, you can see that it's mirrored onto the other side. Excellent, right? Assign selected bone. Assign selected bone. Same thing with the ankle or the foot right here, left foot. Assign selected bone. I'm going to assign this one to the neck. And this one, last one right there to the head. If there's motion on the fingers, let's take a look. This is the wrist, selecting one finger. And there's not much keyframe information going on here. If you want to capture that information and project it onto other characters, then click right here, right next to the hand, that triangle. And just continue what you've been doing. And then click out here. You're always looking for this to be green checked or sometimes you can get away when it's yellow. Perfect scenario is when it's all green. Now that it's defined as a character, 
we can relate this to another character. Right now, let's just focus in on what we can do to clean up this animation, take a little control over it. The animation's still here. You could switch to the source being away from none, which is under bone control to control rig. And when you do that, cool, we got a control rig, but we don't have our animation happening. So I have my control rig that I can now repose my character. Oh, look, it's little toes are tapping. I guess I should have defined that down here. And I'm gonna undo my movement of control rig. So my goal is to adjust the animation using the control rig and bake it back down to the bones and control other characters. Let me get out of the control rig mode. Select, select your character, and then go to bake, bake to control rig. And now all those keys are baked to this control rig. Let's say you want to animate this separately, this hand. I could select the hand and I could select all of these keys by shift dragging marquee selection on it, right click, delete. Now that hand has no motion on it. So you can repose this hand. We can animate this pose. Maybe the hand is down here. Put a keyframe there. And maybe you lower the hand. Maybe this hand will point towards something or grab a door. This is a great way to work with your motion data and add new motions to your character and adjust those keys. When you're all done, we can bake this back down to the skeleton by going under bake, bake to skeleton. And now that the source is no longer control rig, you can see, hey, look, that new hand animation's there. And I'm showing you this because I'm interested in cleaning up what's going on with the feet. They're going all over the place. Maybe I want my character to kind of stay in one place, not take a step forward, or if it takes a step forward, not to be so, well, much like that, defining the laws of physics. I'm gonna use the same process to remove the animations on the leg and use the control rig to pin the legs down, selecting the legs, one leg at a time, I'll select all those keys, delete, and this is a lot easier doing the graph editor Select the keys and delete because in the graph editor, you can select the hierarchy as well. And to show doing the same thing in the graph editor, just select the upper leg, windows, animation editor, graph editor, click here. And that selects all the body parts underneath the main root of the leg. More keys, select this whole graph and press the delete key. And that also removes all the keyframes for not only the upper leg, but all of its children as well. Bake the keys. Back to the control rig. And we pop into the control rig mode. I'm going to select both of these rings around the feet, the controllers around the feet, and I'm going to delete its keys. Right click, delete, and do the same thing with this leg. Selecting all those, right click and delete. Now look, the leg is pretty much staying put. Any place that it does something like this. Trying to defy the laws of physics right there. That's the deal with this rig right here. Because you could stretch it beyond so now it's going back and adjusting the hip. So how to adjust this? We can't delete all these keys because some of the key information is very important, such as the rotation happening here. We're interested in just modifying this controller so it doesn't drag this character up into the air. To do that, expose the layers. And in this application, it's control A or underneath the channel box if you need help channel box right up here. You have a layer tab for layering your objects. You also have this animation layer tab. 
Select this controller, and this technique will work with any controllers that you want to modify in the same way. These keys are too dense, but we don't want to get rid of all this animation because some of it is useful. Click on the word layers and create layer from selected and watch the timeline. Wow, like magic, it all disappeared. No, it didn't disappear. It's all on the base layer. And this is a layer above the base layer that you can animate on top of to make adjustments. And to do that, I'm going to put a keyframe right here. And I'll wait until my character starts to stretch away from the ground like this, like something's very interesting. Maybe it's seeing a miniature black hole being dragged in, but I don't want that to happen. Around frame 180, I'll put another keyframe. And here, where it's extreme, I'll just take this controller and drag it back. And put a keyframe there. Compared to earlier, a lot more stable. You go back and adjust some of the stretchiness, like here. Let's go back to the keyframe. The side view, and I wasn't taking account the front view and it's rolling, but that's all right. You can just continue to correct it this way. Going to that key. Maybe it leans a little bit more this way. I'm gonna adjust the frames per second. Instead of playing every frame, play at 24 frames per second. And this will be the real-time speed of animation. I can see the feet going up a little bit, like this. And we know how to correct that. We put keys in here and just drag those feet back down. Next step isn't about really controlling this character and you're done cleaning it up. Then the next step really is to go back to Human IK going under this tab, that button, and bake, bake to skeleton. And there's all this keyframe data that we corrected, baked onto the skeleton. The next part, oh, it's waving high. Yes, bye for now, because the next video shows how to relate this cleaned up motion capture data that's related to the human IK or whatever animation system you might be using in your own application to your character to control your character in Maya or in Unity. And once you get it controlled in Maya, you can export the clip into Unity or Unreal. You're gonna do the same process here. Make this a human IK character and then the motion capture data will flow onto this character and you continue animating the way you want in this application or exporting to other applications. Open up the human IK if you don't see this tab it would be under Window, Animation Editors, Human IK. Create a skeleton. And skeleton might not fit. Skeleton might be too small or too big. You scale up or down that character's skeleton by using this input field. I'm gonna move over my character, selecting it all in the outliner and centering it within the skeleton while I'm here Go into shading, x-ray joints to see the joints inside the character. And this is a pretty close fit. I'm gonna move down this shoulder. Maybe I'll rotate it a little bit. I'm going to then look at the hand and elbow, elbows where it should be. I'm gonna to have to Let's see, maybe move back. Maybe move back this shoulder a little bit to make it fit better in the hand. Go move the hand over and then click this button to make all the same changes on the other side. Just like that. Next step is to connect the polygon mesh to the skeleton. You do that by going to the outliner, selecting all the polygons within the outliner, window outliner, and if you've missed a few like I did, just go back and reselect them. And shift click on the skeleton at the hip, then go to rigging, skin, bind skin. You open up definitions tab, 
You might see a little yellow right here. Don't worry about yellow messages. When it's green, it's great. When it's yellow, it should be okay. When it's red, then you have an issue to look into. Now you could go to source clip, control rig, and this character can be animated using the control rig. The character can pick something up from the ground and you can pose it. But I'm not interested in posing it this way. Now that it's related using human IK, instead of a control rig, we're going to relate the motion capture data to this character. Switching back to none, save your file, and you're ready for the next step. Save your files a different name just in case something happens. You want that ability to jump right back without having to go through all these steps. Import your motion capture character. File import and select your motion capture character. And that's the one that was all rigged up. And this character will drive our character and then all these keys will be baked onto our character skeleton. We don't even, you don't even need the mesh. You could delete the mesh if you wanted because we're interested in the motion capture data and that lives on the skeleton. This is character one and this imported one gets the name of the file, which is mode 2A and character one. You'll select your character and for its source, select the imported character, mode cap A, character one. And now you can see, look at our character. It knows how to do all that funky animation projected onto our character. And you can see the scale didn't matter because the human IK takes care of the scale. The next step is to just bake all this motion onto our character because we don't want to have to be dependent upon this imported character for puppeting our real character. Select the skeleton, click this button, bake, bake to skeleton. And when it's all done, you could select this imported motion capture character. You select it at the hip joint, press delete. And you can see your character is now being controlled by all that motion capture keys baked onto its skeleton. And from here, you can follow the steps in the first video to clean up the motion on this character.